I think the opportunities to try to build intelligent computers based on networks that have that kind of sentient capability. It has a lot of promise uh, to create this totally new paradigm of computing, which exists in our brains, but is not really commercially realized at this point. There are materials that are emerging now that have a range of conductivities. Um, they don't have a specific value. You can change the conductivity they have by changing the way you process these materials. Resistors, um, capacitors, inductors, these are all types of electronic components. A memristor is a component that remembers the charge that is passed through it. Um, and it does this by changing its resistance. So hence memory and resistance or memristance. What we're working on are nanowires which display memory resistance. Nanowires are spaghetti-like objects. Uh, they can be made of different materials. They can be metals. They can be semiconductors. What's special about them is that the width of the spaghetti is very, very small. It can be ranged from like 10 to 20 atoms to maybe hundreds of atoms. But the length can be, in fact, several microns. Uh, a micron is a millionth of a meter. So it may seem small, but it's actually quite long. But interests us in particular is what happens when you actually have tangled spaghetti like networks um, and they tend to have unusual properties. Random collections of junctions is a lot closer to how the brain works. I mean the brain starts out with a huge number of essentially random junctions and then it learns which ones are important and which ones aren't and it just discards the ones that aren't important. Learning involves the specific firing of neurons in the right sequence. By engineering these artificial nanowires in ways, we're able to make them to, to fire and chirp in appropriate ways. And we're trying to understand, can we harness that firing in a way to mimic the kind of firing we have inside a human brain? Whilst we have many technologies out there to do computation, we don't have technologies that are capable of learning. Computing based on memory systems would be a very different model than the architectures that we use for computing right now. Digital computing is really all about off and on and storing sort of ones and zeros. And we're looking at something that's really more analog that can have a variety of values. This isn't necessarily a direct competitor to digital computing. It's more a different niche entirely. So there are some applications that we're currently very bad at, even with supercomputers like facial recognition. If I was to show you a photograph and, and ask you to identify this person in the room, you could do it pretty quickly. But in fact, if I gave the same information to a computer, it would probably take a supercomputer to identify that person in the room and say a thousand people or a hundred people. Conversely, what you expect is for these kind of network computers, which will be intelligent, um, which will be able to do what we call neuromorphic computing. A computer that was built on such a network should be able to do that very, very quickly. The challenge for researchers like myself is to see, can you actually, from a random network, where you relax all those constraints, you, can, you have no ground rules, but you have simple rules for connectivity, can you get immersion phenomena, which will give you a new kind of intelligence and a new kind of connectivity. And that's what excites us.